The world around us evolves constantly, and gaming is no exception to this change. Both us as gamers and the industry need to accept it and move with it, rather than try to resist change. Many trends come and go, but if you've been gaming for a long time, we're sure that you can find something that's died, or is currently dying in gaming that you wish the industry would bring back. We thought of 10 such things, and today we will present them to you. I'm Josh, welcome to Hotfix Gaming. Today, we're talking about 10 trends in gaming that are dying, or have already died. Number 10. Movie Tie-Ins In the early 2000s, it seemed like almost every movie that came out had a video game tie-in. Think of The Incredibles, Spider-Man 2, King Kong, the official game of the movie, and of course, the very popular GoldenEye 007. Sure, not all of these video games had the same qualities, and oftentimes they were quick cash grabs that took advantage of the hype surrounding the latest films. But some of them were incredible titles that are still worth playing today and have dedicated fan bases. One day, they just stopped making such games. No one exactly knows why, but many gamers believe that it has to do with sales and the amount of time it took to create such a game. Plus, looking at the current cost of making a game in 2024, a movie tie-in could easily rival the movie budget, and that's just something developers aren't willing to risk. Number 9. In-game unlockable items or characters With the rise of in-game purchases and downloadable content, or DLCs, the way additional content is delivered has changed drastically, leading to unlockables being things of the past. Nowadays, instead of unlocking a new skin, item, or a character, when you complete a mission, you get an achievement or trophy, and that's it. If you want a particular item, it's usually locked behind a paywall, so you have to reach for your wallet. The unlockable items we used to see in gaming in the early 2000s were mostly cosmetic, but somewhere down the line, companies have realized that if gamers wouldn't be able to get them for free, some would actually be willing to pay for it, and that's how paid add-ons started. If you have an itch for free unlockables, don't worry, there are still a few games where you can unlock items for free. Mortal Kombat 11, for example, has the towers and other game modes where you can unlock stuff for free. Bayonetta 3 has weapons, accessories, and even two characters that you can unlock while playing the game. Warframe is another game that doesn't even need completion to unlock over 40 characters and hundreds of weapons. 8. Couch Co-ops Online gaming is a lot of fun and has its own set of advantages, but nothing can beat sitting next to your friend together and moving down hordes of zombies in Left 4 Dead, or doing the campaigns in Gears of War from the comfort of your couch. Lately, it seems like even franchises that used to have a couch co-op option are ditching it in their newer games in favour of online gaming. A recent example is Halo Infinite, which doesn't have a couch co-op, despite its predecessors offering it. It feels like companies forgot there could be more than one gamer in a household. Or did they? Like many decisions nowadays that developers need to make, couch co-op has become heavily influenced by money. With significant advances in graphics, frame rates, it's more challenging to deliver the fast-paced action gamers expect while rendering all screens at the same graphical fidelity. Unfortunately, it's not cheap to develop video games. When that money could be better spent on building an online multiplayer campaign, it just makes sense to leave the local co-op in the dust. 7. Physical Disc Copies Ubisoft has spoken about this trend before, saying that there will always be a market for physical games, no matter how small that market becomes. But unfortunately, we cannot deny the fact that the sales of physical copies are declining at quite a fast rate. It has been claimed that as much as 90% of game sales made throughout 2022 alone were digital, but mobile games are included in that figure too, so take that with a grain of salt. Just like everything we've mentioned so far in this video, physical disc copies of video games are yet another way for companies to cut some of the costs of making a game. With technology evolving and becoming more costly, having a disc version just makes everything that much more expensive. Unfortunately, we could see the prices of physical games going up in the near future. 6. Motion Controls Motion controls were supposed to be the next big step in gaming evolution. But instead, gamers got goofy sports and dancing games and a bunch of other titles that barely even worked. Nintendo's Wii had massive success at producing games that were perfect for motion controls, and seeing that both Microsoft and Sony tried to replicate the success with their own Kinect and Move, but we all know how that turned out. Nowadays, even Nintendo has all but abandoned motion control in favour of mobile gaming, the Switch, 
while Connect is a piece of Microsoft history that they're probably hoping we'll all just forget about. 5. Cheat Codes Believe it or not, cheat codes were originally put in games back in the day for ease of development, not for the end consumer. Cheat codes were there so that developers could give themselves invulnerability, infinite ammo, extra lives and whatnot while they were testing certain aspects of the game, without having to start levels over and over again. Then, once the game was finished, the developers would leave these cheat codes in it. Nowadays, with the tools developers have at their disposal, cheat codes are slowly becoming a thing of the past, as games are far more robust and allow devs to run the tests easier. So, any code you might have found in newer games are more or less either easter eggs or actual features for the consumer. Number 4. E3 E3, once the largest video game trade show in the industry and the biggest video game showcase event of the year, is gone for good, after multiple years of cancellations. One of the reasons why this event got cancelled for good was actually hinted by none other than Stanley Pierre Lewis, the CEO of Entertainment Software Association, the organisation that ran E3. More and more game developers and publishers have started in recent years to move away from the event and organise their own ones, which are less costly and are usually targeted directly to players, rather than industry insiders and journalists, like E3 used to do. Even before COVID-19, we had Nintendo Direct, Xbox Game Showcase, and Sony's State of Play to look forward to, and even rival E3. While E3 being cancelled might not come as a surprise, it will still be missed by many. 3. Official Magazines Not so long ago, the video game magazine section in newsagents was filled with 10-plus quality magazines. From multi-format publications such as Games Master, CVG and Games TM to classy platform-specific magazines as official PlayStation Magazine, 360 Gamer and official Nintendo Magazine. Nowadays, though, the choice is down to just two magazines. Play, which is a PlayStation magazine, and Edge. Some people would just say, why not read online? That's where everything is moving nowadays anyway. Sure, gaming websites are fine for news, previews and reviews, but they really cannot excite in the same way magazines used to. Many gamers remember fondly of the days when they'd do a newsagent's run in order to get their gaming news, and some even talk about the magazines coming with floppy disks or CDs containing playable demos, or freebies such as coasters or keychains. Sometimes it's not just about getting your information, it's about turning it all into an enjoyable and exciting experience. 2. Midnight Launches Just less than a decade ago, even a medium-sized video game would get a midnight launch event. But nowadays, such things don't happen anymore, not even for AAA titles. We could speculate that the rise of digital gaming is what has put midnight launches into a halt, but in recent years we've seen massive titles like God of War, Ragnarok and Elden Ring get released without getting a big launch anymore. And these titles have sold a lot of physical copies, on top of the digital ones. The reason why such events were so loved by many was because they helped foster that feeling you belonged to a certain community. Nowadays, we do have the internet to keep us connected, but that feeling of belonging, unfortunately, is gone. Before we move to the number one thing that many gamers miss, let's do an honourable mention. Cloud services. And no, there's no chance of cloud gaming ever taking over from consoles. This type of service relies solely on how strong your internet connection is. But it's not just the quality of your internet connection that affects gameplay. No matter how good your Wi-Fi is, you can still expect high latency and lag in cloud gaming. This type of service is one that no matter how good people's internet connection gets, is not going to catch on. And now it's time for our number one spot, the most missed aspect of gaming. Number one, video game manuals. Retro gamers who used to play on consoles like the Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, handheld consoles and older consoles all know the feeling of opening a new game box and discovering a small booklet. Little did we know that this little thing we took for granted might disappear one day. These manuals are now not just extremely rare, but they also cost a lot of money to buy. These little video game manuals contained precious information about the game, its controls and sometimes even cool backstory to help players enjoy the game even more. Nowadays, new titles let you discover these things by yourself, through trial and error, which can be quite frustrating for many gamers, especially new ones. What do you think of the things we've mentioned in this video? If you could bring back one thing from our list, which one would it be? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you want more gaming content, make sure to check out our top 10 PS3 games with graphics that still hold out. 
or our top 10 video game franchises with no bad games. Both videos are linked on screen.